I've only known him for like two days. So, you know. <laughs> but does it sell cars? A conversation exploring social advertising for automotive retailers. Welcome to But Does It Sell Cars from the beautiful Podcast Village Studios in Washington, D.C. I'm your host, Johnny Mack, a.k.a. John McAdams from Social Dealer, your 25-year car guy. For the past 15 years, I've been helping dealers leverage social media and digital media to sell and service more cars profitably. In the studio with me today is none other than Coleman Craddock-Willis from Facebook in Austin, Texas. Welcome, Coleman. How are you? Johnny Mack, what's going on, my friend? Yeah, yeah. Glad to have you here, man. Thanks for joining us to talk about social media. I'm glad to be back. We had uh, so much fun. Episode one. I'm just, I'm just uh, honored. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad we got you back. You know, I think, uh, I think episode one was a an, a fantastic way to to let our audience uh, think about social media and how to use it to uh, to grow their business. What we're going to talk about today is a little deeper. These topics are going to be a little deeper. Uh, we'll call it social media 201, if you will. Social media is about fishing where the fish are, right? Um, so we're going to go into three different ponds. Some ponds have fish and some don't have fish. But as a dealer, I want to go to the pond that has all the fish. So I think what we're going to talk about is using some of the Facebook tools to go fishing where the fish are. Sound good? I love that. Perfect. So let's give a little fun fact out to the audience so that they kind of kind of understand the breadth and the depth of this fishing pond that we're going to get into. The first one is that there's about 2 billion monthly active users on social media. It's a pretty deep pond with a lot of fish in it that we can go catch. The other one is that the average consumer has about five, maybe six social media apps that they use, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, those things. So we know they're online. We know how deep the pools are. But we also know there's about 60 billion messages, billion with a B, flowing through uh, Facebook Messenger and the WhatsApp. So we certainly have some very deep pools to go fishing in. So what I wanted to really get to you uh, talk to you about today, Coleman, was Facebook Marketplace and how that's changed the online classified business for car dealers for used. And I, I know there's some new probably news you want to bring up about that. But maybe give us a little bit of uh, insight as to uh, why Facebook Marketplace came to be and uh, and how dealers can really utilize that today. Yeah, absolutely. So I think just to just to start as a comment on those fun facts, which I mean, I love to hear all the time. They're fantastic. And uh, it's imperative, I think, that people really understand what that means. In today's world, we're really living in an uh, economy of attention. So it's really where are the eyeballs, where are people going to for most of just their day? And I know we talked about this before, but just like your phone screen time. Mm -hmm. And so when you're thinking about that, you know, you want to present whatever you're trying to sell uh, in, in the best type of way from a creatively dynamic way that's optimized for exactly what you want. And so from that point, you know, what we want to do at Facebook is connect the world. And so when we started Marketplace, we really noticed that, you know, before you're seeing all these groups of buying and selling. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we really created a platform that's just more succinct in how you list things and the buying selling process, which just makes it incredibly easy. What we noticed was that a ton of the buying and selling that was going on in Marketplace were vehicles, were used vehicles. And so with that type of market, this isn't, you know, you're buying a vacuum cleaner <laughs> that for 30 bucks, you're buying a car. And so how do we create a platform that's tailored towards that type of buying just process and, and that type of purchase itself? When we launched Marketplace for, for used cars and having our different inventory partners and social dealers one, we wanted to make it as easy for dealers to upload those catalogs, those cars onto Marketplace and for that to be a seamless process with the functionality of Messenger uh, for people to get more information, to schedule test drives, to submit a lead, all of that. You know, there's very little friction to do that. And that's one thing I love about Marketplace um, and the way that we've built it. The most amazing thing about it is that, you know, when this launched, I mean, the results were fantastic, as you'll hear from many dealers. And I want to hear from you just what you've heard from dealers as well. Mm -hmm. And given that all of those have been incredibly positive, the roadmap for where Marketplace is going to go, I mean, the sky's the limit. I, I'm just a big fan. I, I can't wait to see how it scales. Yeah, I think Marketplace is a game changer 
for dealers that you know how to utilize it, certainly for used cars. If not the world's largest online classified for automotives, it's pretty darn close to it. I don't know the exact stat, but I'm saying it's pretty it's pretty big. I've got That's why we love that, you, Johnny Mac. There you yeah. go. <laughs> I can tell you that dealers are selling cars like candy bars on the marketplace uh, when they do it the right way. So it's definitely a, a medium that I think dealers need to gravitate towards. Yeah. And if uh, if anybody in the audience is not selling cars from Marketplace, please let us know, right? We'd love to help you sell more cars because I hear it all the time. I started with Marketplace. I got rid of Marketplace. I wasn't selling cars. And I kind of look like deer in the headlights when they tell me that because I've, every single dealer that I know doing it the right way sells cars on the Marketplace. Yep. And I think as that transitions into perhaps maybe new cars, uh, right now it's strictly pre-owned vehicles, uh, then I think we'll see even greater adoption uh, at the dealership level, but also performance, right? So uh, now I can sell new and used cars right now, strictly used. So thanks for the uh, insight on the marketplace. I think that's fantastic. You know, along with that is really hyper-targeting and building the right audience in Facebook, right? And and I'd like to maybe spend a few minutes with you to talk about audience building with inside of Facebook. Why is it important? The different types of audiences that are out there. And I think after that, we'll probably get into you know, ad types and that, but maybe you can kind of give us a little intro into uh, building custom audiences and why it's so important. Yeah, 100%. When it comes to audiences on Facebook and Instagram, it's pretty amazing just how much you can do. There's a couple ways to build custom audiences. So I think first, using a CRM from a dealer uh, of just past customers, people have, you know, come in to buy a car or gotten service done, that's an incredibly powerful list, full stop. And I think dealers need to know just what type of you know goal that they're really sitting on sometimes, because sometimes they'll be like, well, you know, we'll boost a post to people who like our page. <laughs> and I, I, Johnny, Johnny can just see stop. my face. Just stop. It's incredibly important to know, like, you're sitting on a gold mine already. And so the way that you can leverage that to be successful on Facebook, you're already ahead of so many people. Using that just as a baseline of, okay, we can target people who have bought and serviced a car, one. Two, people retargeting and creating an audience of people who've come to your website, which is the highest performing audience, I think, along with you know your, your actual customers, the people mm-hmm. who bought. Getting those folks between those two, you, you can do so much with that where I implore dealerships to, to utilize that as much as possible. Using that as a baseline... We can even get into lookalike audiences, which is a type of audience that Facebook created to say, you know, look, these are the people who have bought or serviced their car at your dealership. We can, using our data in a completely safe and private way, target people who also look like people who have come to your dealership and bought. That's an incredible capability. And I think it's important for people to fully dig down deep as to what that means for your dealership and the type of return you can get. So I just implore dealerships to to split test even. So have one campaign where maybe you're targeting just zip codes versus when you're targeting your custom audiences of people who have bought or look like audience of you know those who look like those who have bought. When you start to really inspect the data, uh, rest assured that that's going to be incredible. There's going to be a lift there that you're going to see. So that's just kind of the first about custom audiences and look like audiences. Mm-hmm. As advertising expertise continues, I think using a different myriad of not just a custom audience, not just lookalike audience, but how you layer in different aspects of what you want to present, the ad copy itself, you can get some you know amazing returns when you're using a bunch of different technicalities on Facebook. And that's what I really get excited for a lot of these dealerships to get creative in their, in their targeting. It's not just a zip code anymore. I think the key word is creative. I would implore dealers, e-commerce managers to really look at the depth of the audience size that they could segment into a custom audience and then hyper target and add to them directly. The, I don't want to say it's limitless, but it's close. But it also uh, gives the ability to then add in, say, third party data if you had it, right? That might bring just an extra depth or level into that audience and hyper target even more. What is your position and how do you feel about using some of the third-party data that's out there on top of the already incredible Facebook data that's out there? Probably probably some of the very best data, but obviously it doesn't have everything. Um, what's your position on just adding some third-party data into an audience? Yeah, that's a great question. I always want to do what's best for the dealer. That's what's most important for me. So I think, once again, going back to testing, you want to see how different audiences perform based on what you're trying to sell. 
and that goes into creative and just overall targeting and where you're at in the country, you know, itself, there's a lot of different factors there. Like I said, you know, the highest converting audiences are those who went to your websites retargeting those folks. And so how you build that, totally up to you. First party, third party, whatever. It's just about doing right uh, by the dealership in terms of what you see for sales. And I'm always going to, you know, stand behind, just do what's right by the dealership. Personally, I love I love the custom audiences that look like audiences. And I right. implore people to test, really do a test in a way that's not, oh, you know, let's put 30 bucks <laughs> and another 30 bucks. Yeah. And, oh, wait, I don't think we got what we wanted. You know, really put, you know, put money down because that's where the winners are. You have to take risks in order to do it. And a lot of the times dealers could be way too conservative when there's a lot of money to be made when you take those risks, when you're really like, you know what, let me put a real budget behind this because Mm -hmm. what's going to happen is you're going to see incredible results. Going back to the first fun fact, it's 2 billion people. These are all potential customers of yours. A lot of eyeballs. I think it's every second five profiles are made. Wow. So if we're thinking of that in terms of your potential customers, this is the biggest place to be. And so I think it's important not to just box yourself in of, well, this worked before, or we really like using this data or whatever. You have to experiment and, and truly think. We do have to experiment, right? It's not a, a, a media that we've all figured out yet. We're learning and growing uh, along with everybody else. It's important to get creative, to A, B, test it, make sure that you're getting the results that you expect out of it. And then when you do, apply more budget to that or apply a different direction. But I think it's really important to really open up your minds and look at the various audience sets that are out there and to segment them and then hyper-target those ads to those, to those folks. I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I think we'll continue on with custom audiences, but the reporting part of custom audiences, because that's really where the rubber hits the road. So uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back in a little bit. Sounds good. <laughs> today. Yeah. Yeah, today. How's 10 minutes sound? <laughs> Kelly's like, we have to practice. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, hey, welcome back to But Does It Sell Cars? We're in the studio here in beautiful Georgetown with Coleman Craddock Willis from Facebook. I know when we left off, we talked a lot about custom audiences. We did. Um, But now I want to dive a little deeper um, because now we found the perfect audience set. We found uh, the perfect message to send to that audience. And now it's time to get some results, right, and get some reporting back. So, Maybe you can talk to us a little bit about some of the uh, the custom audience reporting that's inside of uh, Facebook and, and then maybe where it's headed in the future so that uh, we can get an idea what dealers can expect. Totally. Like I said, I think I'm just so excited about custom audiences in general and look like audiences. The way in which that they can be leveraged for dealers is it's undervalued, I think, in a certain way. And I think it's important that we spend enough time understanding it, which goes uh, right in hand with understanding the reporting of it. And so the first thing is audience insights. I think, you know, you were telling me that story in the car just about a dealer saying, oh, well, our target market is blank. Yeah. And you pulled up the insights and Mm -hmm. said, actually, what was it? It was the opposite. Yeah. So he thought the audience was mostly male, uh, 45 to 55. And inside the audience side uh, set for Facebook, it was really female, married, educated, 25 to 44. Exactly. If you're targeting towards that audience, how much different your ads are going to be. Hugely different. And that creates a better return. And so the amazing thing about understanding people who have bought, people who look like they have bought, or people who look like those who have bought, is digging deeper into that audience insights. Going along with that, when you, you know, when you run a campaign using custom audiences, the way I was talking about being able to A-B test, take those results to heart. I think sometimes people don't want to believe like, oh, like, it performed much better. Well, is this because that and making excuses for yeah. good results sometimes can be something that I see because it's hard to change and it's hard to adapt and, and be a first mover. And so the way in which that, you know, you have to take those uh, insights from using those campaigns for custom audiences really just expand it out and even more so um, offline conversions. This is something I'm deeply passionate about because it closes the loop. We're talking about online advertising campaigns. And then we have offline conversions to come in to say, well, what actually happened? Did that person buy a car? And I think present that to a dealer, it makes Facebook and Instagram all the much more digestible and understandable because we can take the sales data, upload it right back into Facebook, and I can say, 
75% of the people who bought a car actually were served your ad. That's absurd. And they can give you a cost per that sale. Yeah. Well, that's closing the loop, right? So, but does it sell cars, right? So I spent $10,000 on social media ads. I generated 300 leads, blah, blah, blah. The question that they're always going to ask you is, well, that's great, Coleman, or great, John. You know, how many cars did I sell or how many extra vehicles did I service out of that $10,000 spend? And I think that's absolutely where the offline conversion report comes from. So in the industry, they might call it a matchback report. Facebook calls it the offline conversion report. It's the same thing. Um, But it will really detail on how many vehicles uh, were sold by folks who saw or interacted with those social media ads. Yeah, exactly. And people will be floored. And I think that question of, but does it sell cars? Yes. Full stop. Yeah. And and I know we're talking a lot about front end here with sales, right? Um, but let's not leave service and, and fixed ops out of this. Oh, um, my Facebook, gosh. Not at crazy, all. right? Oh. Uh, <laughs> if you really want to get down on it, you know, get down on service with, with, with Facebook. It's, it's an amazing thing to do. But as you said earlier, you, you have to have a little bit of faith and you have to, you know, take a little risk and put a little money on the table. If you want to win the hand, you know the poker hand. You got to ante up, right? You got to you got you can't always fold. You got to sometimes win, and and I think Facebook right now for for fixed operations is a uh, is an untapped territory for a lot of dealers. Exactly, and I think just imagine you have a custom audience of people who bought, and then you can serve those people an offer of twenty percent off an oil change if you come into the dealership. Mm-hmm. Who's not going to take that if you're targeting those people and you're catching them where they're actually at? Easy. What if you took the DMS of everybody you sold a car to that haven't been in for service for six months and you offered them a nineteen ninety nine oil change or whatever the case may be? Yeah. You haven't seen them in six months anyway. You must also take that shot. You know they're on social media. They've been on it for three hours a day. Yep. Take a shot. Four for you, John. Yeah, I'll, yeah there you go. Yeah, four, <laughs> yeah, four, five, yeah, way too many hours on social media. So I, I think it's important that uh, we open up our eyes uh, or our minds like a parachute. Take it for what it's worth, and we look at different ways to market our dealership using social media because it is the primary media right now for for many, many people, auto intenders looking to buy or service their car. Exactly. And I think to your point, I love the parachute um, analogy because that's where we're at. You have to think holistically. And I think when you start to understand that there's so many different aspects of the purchase cycle for auto, it's not just buying the car, it's the fixed ops. It's the fixed ops. It's an incredible market that a lot of dealers don't think about. But when we think about the data, oh my gosh, we know exactly when this person bought a car. We Mm -hmm. knew that they were heavily influenced by Facebook. And additionally, we can serve them exactly, you know, what they're looking for, going back to the hyper personalization. Yeah. It's one of these aspects of you can't get enough of the of the good reporting, the good insights to increase your return. So I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. Just a little bit. We're gonna throw it in a third gear, fourth gear. I wanna talk a little bit about the F eight conference that just recently happened with Mr. Zuckerberg on stage and He basically said, we're going to change a few things at Facebook. We want to make social media become more personal, which is funny because social is personal to begin with. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that and how that really segues into social targeting and finding the right person with the right data at the right time. And what what media or what ad sets would uh, would you recommend to do that to get the most throughput for a dealer? Yeah. So when we're talking about, I think, just advertising of the 21st century, we're really talking about making them so personal where they don't feel like they're spam at all and to any extent because no one likes that. The beauty of Facebook and Instagram is the um, dynamic capabilities that we have. And this is, you know, especially for auto. The way that we have built the product of automotive inventory ads, the way that I can retarget car that you looked at, now all of a sudden, you know, this is not something, an ad that's popping up between, you know, the picture of your grandkids and, you know, (laughs) the cat gifs. And you're like, well, what is this? It's, oh, wait, I was looking at that car. Oh, my gosh. Wait, did I fill out that lead? Let me click on this. Let me fill out this Mm -hmm. lead. Let me go back to the website. It becomes much more of a seamless experience. And that's exciting, I think, just for everybody. I would much rather have that personalization when it comes to ad than, than not. I think everybody would. Everybody would. The way in which we're leading in that category, to me, psh, I mean, not that not that you want to hear it, but that's how Amazon does it, right? So you looked at this particular water bottle, and next thing you know, here's five other water bottles that people have liked as well. Don't you want to buy them too? Exactly. And I think it's, you know, if I'm looking for a pair of jeans at the Gap, 
or something like that, and I go on Instagram, I'm going to see those. That's my second post that yeah. I see. Yeah, right? guaranteed. The fact that the auto industry is is now getting there on Facebook and Instagram, oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, it's an eye opener for dealers when they realize that with an AIA automotive inventory ad plus lead, how Facebook can pre-fill out their name, their phone number, their email address, and really dump that lead directly into their CRM tool. They don't have to make that extra stop at the website, at the VDP, and hope that converts right now. Certainly, there's plenty of ads that will do that and drop them at the website, but I think it's a fantastic lead type or ad type or it can pre-fill out that form with my contact information because I'm in a hurry. I don't want to fill it out. I've got fat thumbs. I'm going to get it wrong anyway. Yep. Pre-fill it out and hit send. And it's on that vehicle that I know that I've already looked at. We'll call it whatever it is. And, and now it remarketed to me on my Facebook profile, my, my news feed. Now I'm really interested in it. And I hit one button. And now I want to talk to you. Exactly. Crazy. There's no friction. And it's it actually mirrors the way that you'd probably buy a car, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not just going to fill out a lead for, oh, well, you know, I like the dealership. It's I want this car and I want more information about this car. The entire, you know, buying process now, so much easier. We're making it easy for everybody. Yeah, I know. I know we're not talking about myth debunking here, but I'll, I'll take one step in that direction. Um, you know, there's probably more than 15 different ads on Facebook that you can run as a car dealer. Yeah, most think there's only one kind of ad. Actually, there's two. There's a sales ad and a service ad. Yet there's over 15. There's probably even more, but I, I can tell you 15 core ones that work really, really well. Was that built on purpose on Facebook side between the collections ads and the canvas ads and the AIA plus uh, lead plus prospecting? Maybe talk a little bit more other than the AIA plus lead, maybe the plus prospecting ad and, and how that works. To your first point, just about the way that we build just just ad creative, just platforms and formats themselves, along with different ad capabilities and, and targeting and, and all those layered in together. We want to do that just to give every single business the capability to do exactly what they want to do and work customers through a funnel in the way that feels right for their business, which is different for every single industry. So AIA for prospecting is a really, really great product just based upon, you know, we, we have AIA for retargeting. So people that have, you know, been to the website, you're serving them back that car. If we can get people who look like them, who would, that would also look at that same type of car, expand on that and really hammer home. We have the data to actually make this successful for you and, and, and actually drive more website views and, and real um, intent. Engagement. Yeah, exactly. Intent, engagement, yeah. Around that, we're going to do that as best as possible. And that's why, once again, it's a product built for auto. It's not based on, oh, well, it worked for e-com. And <laughs> we're going to, exactly. And we're just going to scale that to each industry. We know that it's different, so we built it different. Tell me a little bit more about video yeah. and how you foresee video inside of Facebook and how we as agencies or dealers can better utilize video inside of the Facebook platform. Video is it's overlooked, I think, for a lot of different dealerships nowadays, but it's crucial. It's how we take in content. I read a stat. It was something like... 70% of all, or maybe 80% of all internet traffic is streaming. You're the stat man. I love that. I mean, what? Yeah, crazy, right? So when you're thinking about that's how we consume, because it's easy, it's visual, that's how people want to be communicated to. So on Facebook and Instagram, the way that you can do that best, I, actually, I encourage everybody to look at all the resources we have on the video best practices because they're extensive. But you always want to build video for mobile first. That's how most people are on Facebook and Instagram in general. So you want to make sure the video specs are proper and they're presented in a way where nothing looks wonky. That's that's first. You always want to put your brand first as well because you're continuing to stream. So you want to have, we call it thumb stopping material, ad creative. Yeah. Because, you know, you're scrolling the Empire State Building. Yeah, every know, day. Yeah. yeah every so day. Yeah. You want to have something that grabs the audience. And so building for mobile first, having that brand. So I want to know your dealership within the first three seconds. I would just say in the first two seconds, really. Yeah, exactly. I want to know exactly what am I watching and why. And you want to make it 30 seconds, not a minute ad people. It's 15 seconds or less. So you really have to get the, the point of what you're trying to get across. You have to get it across quickly. People are hyper focused, hyper, you know, moving around. They don't have a lot of time to waste. Um, they want to know what you do, why you do it, where you do it, how you do it. And what will you do for me? So thanks today, uh, Coleman, for, for coming in to the studio in D.C. You know, we covered a lot of topics today from fishing where the fish are and getting the right audience or really fishing in the right pond and, 
you know, make sure we have the right message to go to market and, and capture those fish. And then what do we do with those fish once we catch them and bring them in the boat through reporting, right? I think those are some really key points that we talked about. As well as video, I think video is one of those overlooked media channels right now as well. But it is a lot more engaging than a static picture. So I think uh, the more dynamic video that we use in our messaging as dealers will be better off. So I think with that, we'll probably end the podcast. And I thank everybody out there for listening to But Does It Sell Cars? We'd love to hear from you. Email us at podcast at socialdealer.com. You can also check out all of our episodes at socialdealer.com forward slash podcast. And I think if I can get you to do another podcast in the future, I think it'll be a great show. I think we're going to call it Show Me the Money. What do you think? I love it. A little Jerry Maguire theme, Show Me the Money. You got to you you do the impression now, John. Uh, show Me the Money. You want me to do a little Jerry Maguire screaming it. into the microphone? <laughs> I don't know if everybody wants to hear that, but I think we'll do a little Jerry Maguire uh, twist <laughs> at the end. And, you know, you can be the sun devil and, you hey, know, let's, all that good let's stuff. Let's go. So, let's go. You know, you I complete me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good, man. We'll see you on the next podcast coming up. Sounds great. As always. Go be a social dealer.